<laughs> Welcome. We're going to do some gentle yoga here this morning. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so I'll invite you to start in uh, whatever position works best for you. We're going to do some reclining hip openers and then we'll do some seated ones. Um, so if you want to start laying down, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to start with this uh, pillow under my back so it makes kind of a fish pose. If you don't have a pillow, you can put a yoga block under your shoulder blades or roll up a blanket and put that in there. <laughs> my blanket is currently occupied, so I shall use the pillow. Oh. It just kind of goes under the upper back. So we get this little back bend. Now, I'm going to keep the legs out straight, I think, but you could also do a little butterfly there with the legs. And I do sometimes make that choice. <laughs> it's very nice. Oh. Oh, so we'll take a few moments to sort of settle in. I try to relax right there at the front of my shoulder. Do some nice deep breaths. three more breaths. Take the pillow out from underneath. <laughs> Set that off to the side for now. Give myself a little, oh, just a kind of in between space. The little windshield wipers feel really nice. Sometimes it's nice to pull the knees into the chest, though. <laughs> oh. All right. So we're going to start with. Pardon me. With this little releasing movement for the hip flexors. So we'll lift the toes on one leg, stretch that leg out, give it a nice long stretch, and then draw that one back, then to the other side. While we let this first side relax, we'll stretch the other one. Oh, and then come on back and stretch. And return and then stretch the other side. Return. We're going to do one more where it just goes straight down the center. On each side. You extend my right leg, rotate it out and then bring it back with the rotation, swing it around. Same idea, other side. Stretch out, rotate out. Bring it back, swing it to the middle. Letting that side relax as I do the other side again. Reach it out. And then one more external rotation on each side. 
you have any sort of sense that your hip flexors generally are tight, this is a great release. Like you can do this if you've been traveling, you know, sitting for a long time at a desk. Okay, so we're gonna rotate inward now, and then we'll bring that leg back, stretch it out, rotate internally, come on back, stretch out, rotate internally, come on back. I don't have a lot of internal rotation when my hips are held like this, so <laughs> it's pretty, it's a pretty small range of motion. I'm going to do one more on each side. Oh, when I do my best, I can definitely feel the sort of lengthening of that internal hip rotator while I'm at it. Okay, so now we're going to take the right leg and bring it up on top. I might have to smooth my mat out a little bit. So you can just pause here. And in fact, if there's already a stretch happening in the outer hip, this might be the place to land. You can keep the legs in this arrangement and bring them in, or you can hold on to just the right leg and stretch that left leg back out. And I'm gonna kind of reach through that leg with the toes pointing straight up as I move this leg a little bit across the midline, try to find this kind of external hip, sort of pigeon stretch here in the air. I have found that. <laughs> So I'm just gonna hang on to my shin bone here, being mindful of my knee. So I'm not pulling on the bone, I'm just trying to hold it in place. You could also wrap a strap around your leg and use that. Take a few more breaths here. I'm going to take my right hand and reach in here and grab hold of the sole of my foot and then I'm bringing that foot up so it's like a lunge and then reaching out through the front of this hip there. So I'm sort of letting my arm be at weight. It's almost like a happy baby on one side and then a nice long hip flexor stretch on the other side. Oh, I'm going to do a little rock the baby while I'm at it and then come back to the lunge. baby and back to the lunge. <laughs> There's probably a better name than rock the baby but that's what I got. <laughs> All right this is where we're going to use the strap potentially so I'm going to use it for these next several poses. So starting with a hamstring stretch <laughs> I'm going to put that on my foot and extend the leg. Now, you can just hold this steady, but I'm going to add a little, just a, just a little pulsation. So I'm going to extend the leg and bend the knee, externally and internally rotate. And that's it. That's a little pulsation. Just bend the knee, extend the leg, kind of press up through the heel, and then a little rotation. And I'm not bending the knee a lot. It's just enough that I feel that little shift. I'm going to do this a couple more rounds and then I'm just going to hang out for a little bit. I'm going to find an interesting place to land and just stay for another, like, I don't know, 45 seconds or so.
I'm going to take one more breath and then I'm going out to the side. And similarly, I'm going to bend my knee a little bit, extend it, and then do just a little bit of rotation here in both directions. And I'm going to do that for a little period of time here. You can just hold and hang out. Sometimes this little movement pattern feels interesting. Um, it gives me a chance to explore a variety of like potential sensations that I might, you know, might otherwise miss. And sometimes there are little tight places or little places that are sort of sticky that this uncovers. There's places, sometimes that fascia will get sort of stuck on itself and <laughs> not enough hydration gets in there. And so that's what this kind of gives me a chance to unwind some of those little adhesive places. Okay, so now I'm going to hang out with the stretch for a little while. I'm going to take one more breath here. Now we're going to kind of, I'm going to keep using the strap, but we're going to roll all the way onto the right side. So I'm going to lower that leg, roll onto my right side. And then essentially I'm going to hold onto the strap with my right hand, but you could instead reach down and hold onto your foot with your left hand. So, I'm going to draw this thigh backwards and draw the foot towards my hip or towards my buttock. And so I get a little quad stretch there. You could also, if this just isn't working, you can flip over onto your belly and do it that way. I'm trying to decide how I want my... <laughs> left leg to hang out. Sometimes I like this kind of foot on the ground. Sometimes extending it out feels nicer, but neither of those is my favorite today. Let's see what happens if I add. Oh, that's better. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just kind of taking this, my left arm and sort of dropping it around behind me. Doesn't want to Completely settle onto the ground, but I'm finding like as best I can a kind of interesting little stretch with my shoulder there. I'm going to take one more breath oh, and then I'm going to release this shape for just a second so I can take the strap out of there and then this is going to turn into a twist. So essentially I'm just going to wrap one leg around the other sort of like an eagle, lean them into either into the floor or into a pillow or whatever you've got handy and then roll the shoulders onto the ground so that they're as even as you can get them. <laughs> Decide how your neck is going to settle, whether you're going to turn your head one direction, the other, or right in the middle. And then oh, we'll just let this outer hip kind of stretch <laughs> gently. Let the twist kind of 
open up the side waist a little bit. Two more breaths here. Now, essentially the legs are in the right position <laughs> for the other side to begin. So the way we're gonna do this is just keep the leg arrangement and come to the middle. <laughs> and if that's enough stretch for the outer hip, we just hold on to that. Otherwise you can bring in one or both legs on this left side. I'm stretching the right leg out, kind of finding that just right position for my thigh so I get a nice stretch through this outer hip. And it's a little different than the twist, but it's still the same general territory. And we'll kind of wrap back around onto the other side in a bit. Oh. I'm gonna do two more breaths here. <laughs> I'm gonna reach in with my left hand and grab the sole of my foot and create more of a lunge position here, which lifts me just a little bit more so I have a little more room for extending the front of my right hip. turn this into a hamstring stretch. And again, for the first little bit of this hamstring stretch, oh, I'm gonna turn just a little sideways so that I will not hit the plants on the next pose. <laughs> but in any case, while I make that happen, <laughs> I'm gonna do that little kind of pulsation of movement just to sort of catch all the potential mm, sticky places, <laughs> adhesive places. Sometimes I'll find one like right on the top of my thigh between two quads, or sometimes I'll find one like between two hamstring muscles. Where the fascia just gets a little sticky. It seems to be more of a morning phenomenon than not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it adheses a little bit while I'm sleeping. It's possible I just notice it more then. <laughs> and then I'm just going to let myself stretch out all the way and kind of lean into the stretch for a little bit. to the side and similarly I'm going to start with just a little kind of rotation a little 
bending of the knee. It's really just a sort of slow exploration of the range of motion available to me with my leg in this <laughs> extremely abducted position. <laughs> How much rotation do I have? And then what happens if I bend and extend? So this little area right on this inner knee is an area where I sometimes find little adhesive connective tissue areas, right? Especially right in there, probably a attachment or a hamstring <laughs> right on the inside edge of the back of my knee. It's sensitive, so I'd be mindful as I'm moving through these little shapes, but again, so now I'm going to kind of stretch everything back out and hang out with this pose for a bit. <laughs> So this is where I'm going to kind of change this into the quad stretch. Oh. I'm going to come all the way onto the left side. Oh. And again, I'm going to use my, I'm going to kind of reach over here. <laughs> My upper arm is a pillow, but the rest of that I'm going to hold on to the strap with, right? But you could reach down and hold on to your foot instead, so that's kind of up to you how you want that to work, what works best for you. And then I'm going to see if this arm wants to hang out behind my back. little places for me that are kind of intense with this, the shoulder, a little bit of the quad. So I'm trying my best to sort of settle into it and relax. <laughs> so this particular pose, I'm trying to take a much more relaxed approach to because it tends to be one that pushes a few more of my tense up, <laughs> tense every muscle up against it, uh, resistance. So can I meet the resistance with a little bit of openness and a little bit of softness instead? I think a couple more breaths here. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it on the Zoom, but like one of my neighbors just started up their car and their radio was very loud. <laughs> Apparently the entire neighborhood gets to be entertained. <laughs> All right, I'm releasing this foot from the strap. <laughs> and then I'm going to do this little eagle wrap uh twisty situation so i'm gonna oh, wrap the legs 
find a position where I can get both my shoulders on the ground and settle the legs. So I can do a little lengthening down through the side waist of this outer hip. question of course in my mind is how long will the neighbor hang out with <laughs> the radio blaring out in the neighborhood <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> sometimes I think I should live out in the middle of the woods but then other times it's like yes but then how would I be entertained <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> nice deep breaths Okay, we're gonna take two more breaths. Now, once you come back to the middle, you can give yourself whatever little, you know, I'm gonna do some little windshield, uh, hi. <laughs> I'm gonna do some little windshield wiper moves and a good long stretch and <laughs> avoid getting <laughs> love bite from this ferret here. Oh. <laughs> oh. Do not bite my toes. <laughs> Do it, little weasel. Don't do it. Oh, we'll come to a seated position. <laughs> oh. 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 Do some little seated cat cow shapes. Take the ribs kind of through this, out to the side, around the back, out to the side and in the front. So there's that same little kind of cat shapes, but oh, adding a side bend in the center. I'm gonna swing it the other direction. Adhesions. <laughs> Quite a few little snuggly places there <laughs> along the spine. All right. So we're going to take legs on top of each other. You can stack the knees, you can stack the shins, you can modify it a bit. Sit up tall, maybe lean forward into it. Maybe a side bend instead would be nice. For me, that stretches a little more on the outer hip, but does less um, potential, you know, trickiness for the knee. Whereas if I lean forward far, then, you know, a little bit is fine, but <laughs> too far, it kind of loads all the way down to the knee. Whereas the side bend doesn't really ever do that. It's definitely different, but both are nice. You could certainly work with that, work with a little bit of both. Oh. 
Let's do for maybe about five more breaths. I'm working with some of the little sticky places in my back while we're here. I'll just sort of move in my shoulder blades. One more breath. All right, I'm gonna come out of there. This leg is gonna come around. And essentially, I'm just gonna turn it all the way around. Now, you can straighten this all the way out and do a, a pigeon pose. Um, instead, <laughs> I'm gonna sort of turn sideways and lean in so it gets similar to a pigeon on the front leg, but a little different on the back. So I'm leaving that knee bent. There's a little sort of twist to this. And for me, there's quite a lot of a release kind of around this sort of oh, side waist, oblique area. It might be hip flexor, but feels more surface than that to me. kind of keep leaning in this direction and bring that leg back around and I'll give both legs oh, a little rinse out and then I'm gonna do this double pigeon slash fire log slash square pose on the other side for you it might be a little more in the center more cow face little side bending I'm kind of some days I like that more than others one side felt a little bit better than the other <laughs> I'm gonna do a couple rounds of it but ultimately I'm gonna settle in the front here and again last time what I was doing was kind of protracting one shoulder blade and retracting the other and then switching which side I was doing that on it's really just a kind of in and out movement with the shoulder blades, but it sort of pulls a little bit along this diagonal from the hip to the shoulder along that latissimus dorsi line. <laughs> and it feels pretty nice. If there's an area of my body that's gonna have more adhesions in it, more sticky connective tissue, it's gonna be my back. <laughs> this does help. All right, I'm going to do two more breaths. And do this kind of deer sort of a pigeon shape <laughs> sort of a deer shape deer the animal <laughs> all right and again kind of 
twisting to the point where I feel that little bit of shift along the sideways through the obliques and then just adjusting the hip so that I like the combination. And again, you can do a pigeon pose. It would be delightful. Okay, I'm going to take one more breath. And then gently sort of lean enough that I can bring that leg around. Ah. Ooh. All right. Oh. Now, one more pose before we do a little relaxation. Now this could be, um, you can have your legs straight out in front of you. You can have your um, legs in a wide V. Uh, I'm doing this kind of diamond shape. It's heard this referred to as the star pose, but it's also really similar to the tortoise. It's just, I'm not gonna do the threaded arms here. But I am gonna let my back round so that it's like a tortoise. Find a place for my head to rest. And for me, it's just this is gonna give me the best stretch of all these muscles in my back that I haven't quite gotten to. But if it's better to keep your back a little more um, neutral, definitely do that. I'm going to take three more breaths. And I'm going to unpack this pose really slowly. I'm starting with just getting my spine back into neutral and then undoing the hips and then the legs. Now you could do a seated meditation pose as your final pose. You could do a legs up like over the couch or over a chair. You can do a corpse pose. I'm gonna do a little bit of a supported corpse pose here with this pillow. Well, the most important part is that whatever choice you make, you can settle into it. And as best as possible. <laughs> Apparently everything's going to come down right there as I pull this blanket out. <sighs> the other blanket has a ferret in it, so <laughs> this one is the one that we'll have to do. <laughs> oh gosh, wrong turn. Any case, <laughs> we're going to try to settle ourselves. 
that we can let go and relax. Right down through the little kind of center channel of the body. So right down from the little center of the brain, right behind where the, the eye, the, the nerves of the eye cross from the right side over to the left hemisphere of the brain and from the left eye over to the right hemisphere of the brain and where they make that little X, the um, pineal gland is right there, right behind that. And so that can imagine that area right in the middle of your brain, right, you know, <laughs> right behind your eyes. And from that point, we're just going to try to relax the crown of the head from that kind of inner eye up through the top and then round to the little occipital ridges in the back. Then the forehead relaxes, the jaw relaxes, and we'll try to relax through the throat. And then tracing that little pathway of the vagus nerve down, we'll relax through the chest, and through the belly. Especially if there tends to be a little bit of tension either through the shoulders or through the sort of solar plexus region. And let all that go. And then let the sort of points, front points of the hip just gently release away from one another. Let the hip flexors themselves soften to the point where there's no tension in that system between the lower back and the hips. socket relax and the legs just release into whatever surface they're on. We think if there's another layer that can just be surrendered.
going to take a nice big breath. Let go with a big deep ah, sigh. <laughs> and then as you're ready, you can wiggle fingers and toes and wrists and ankles. Give yourself a stretch. Any other movement patterns that seem appropriate? <laughs> You're ready, come to a seated position. Hmm. Thanks for joining me for some gentle yoga this morning. Let's take a nice big breath. And a sigh. Namaste. <laughs> Welcome to the rest of your day.